So you wanna do some local camping, huh? You live in Southern California and you're just not quite sure where to go, right? Well, you found the right video. Today, me and my wife and my daughter and her boyfriend are here off of Lytle Creek in Southern California. So this is kind of gonna be a video where we can show you different places to go that's really easy to get to, some real easy camping. And also in this video, you're not sure what to bring. Well, we brought a bunch of different things that we're gonna go over with you to show you that you don't need really fancy rigs, which by the way, we're not even gonna sleep in the Jeep tonight. It was just easier to bring it with Dolly. But uh, Ursa Miner staying closed. We're gonna show you guys all of the basics you're gonna need for an easy overlanding uh, uh, overnight trip. Let's go. Let's roll. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm about to take you there. Uh -huh. I'm lightning like Steve McQueen. I'm in the fast lane when the light turns green. And I built tough, I ain't nothing but grit. Cause I made rugged blood, sweat, and spit. Yeah, like a horse I fly, gonna push yourself in for a bumpy ride I like to play hard, but I work harder And I weather the storm, cause I'm built stronger I was born to run I was built to last I was made for speed Cause I was born fast Welcome to Lattle Creek, nestled in Southern California's Inland Empire, where urban fades into wilderness. Our family heads for the trail, embarking on a journey through Lattle Creek's untamed beauty. Leaving city sites behind, our convoy winds its way towards the wilderness trailhead. Arriving at the trailhead, we pause, feeling the anticipation of adventure in the air. With meticulous care, we prepare our vehicles for the rugged terrain that lies ahead, deflating our tires for comfort amidst the rocky trails. Equipped with Coyote screw-on deflators on my Jeep, I ensure it's ready to conquer the challenges of the trail while the other Jeeps use their preferred methods. One final step before immersing ourselves in the wilderness, each footfall bringing us closer to nature's embrace. Join us in exploring the wonders of Lattle Creek Camping. Adventure awaits. What we're doing right now is I'm just airing down all four tires and we're gonna go check on everybody else. Airing down doesn't necessarily mean you're doing it because you need extra traction. Why you're airing down for us on this trip? Because it makes the road so much smoother because it's such a rocky trail up here, so. All right, guys, so Renee is still kind of a rookie at this. He's figuring it out. So while he's airing down, we're gonna go see how Mama Goose is doing it. And uh, these two rigs on 35s, they're gonna air down to about 16 PSI. Just makes it a whole lot smoother on this road, like I said. Dear, how are you doing? Good, but there's bees. <laughs> the bees aren't going to bother you. What are you airing down to? 16-ish. All right. One down, three to go. Well, here's the plan. Um, if you go to the description on this video, I'll leave a link to what I'm about to go over with you guys. This is very helpful. I pulled it off of the Rangers uh, website for this area. It shows you where all the different yellow post sites are. And I'm going to just drive by a couple of them. And then we're going to find the one that we want to stay at. So uh, we'll also be giving you guys an idea of what a couple different of these uh, yellow posts look like, what you can expect when you get here. But let me show you what I'm looking at right here. So again, I pulled this off of the Rangers website and we are down here by the shooting range. You can hear that in the background. We're gonna go up here and everything that you see, all those numbers, those are all yellow post sites. So we're gonna hit up maybe uh, three, four, five of them and show you guys what it looks like depending on how Dolly does. And also, don't forget, if you're gonna come up here and uh, if fires are allowed, you need to get your California fire permit. So, mine's right here, as you can see, and it's good for a whole year. I'll also leave a link to that in my uh, video description as well. And it's super easy to get, guys, and it's important you have that in case you're out and about, so. So, after airing down, our journey continued up the trail. Ahead, another adventurer veers off towards trailhead 3N06A, a reminder of the various paths in this wilderness. As they explore, we continued on following the familiar trail. But beyond this forest lies yellow post sites in other parts of San Bernardino, Cleveland, 
and Los Padres National Forest awaiting your exploration. Approaching Yellow Post Site Number 1, remember, is just one of the many in this specific area of the San Bernardino National Forest. You'll know when you made it to the Yellow Post Site for one clear and obvious reason, if you didn't already see it whenever we were driving in. Yep, that's right. Each one of these sites is identified, should be identified by a yellow post. And where we're at right now on that uh, sheet that is downloadable from my website is we're near yellow post camp one and two. And uh, I'm just gonna walk around a little bit and give you guys an idea. Now this one is right off of the road, which is great if you don't have a four wheel drive or a high clearance vehicle, you don't wanna go too far back there. You still got these beautiful pine trees that you can hang out in, but you are right next to that road that we drove in on. So we are gonna continue on the trail and show you guys the next one. We probably won't stop at two because it's just you know maybe 50 yards past this one with similar views, but uh, we're gonna keep going and we'll catch up with you guys at the next site. So that down there was yellow post site number two. And that one actually wasn't much further, but it seemed like it was a little further away from the road and it was a much nicer campsite. So keep that in mind. Continuing along the trail, our journey unfolds amidst the peaceful area. Navigating the rugged terrain, we carefully traversed the wash to remain on course, ensuring we stayed on trail 3N06. While we continue our path, be sure to note the forthcoming junction that will lead us to trail 3N06B, promising more adventures ahead. We'll delve into this further in the video, so keep your eyes peeled. Anticipation builds as we approach the unfolding of our exploration, uncovering the wonders that await along the trail. All right, guys, so we're pulling up to a bunch of different yellow posts. We're not going to stop at all of them because some of the people are camping here already. But these are campsites like three through nine in this area. We're just going to drive by from the road and show you guys what they look like. Uh, this first one here is number three. So this one that we're passing right now, this is another great campsite. I think this one is like five, six, or seven. Um, they're kind of all scattered throughout. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit further up this road and uh, see if we can find any others. And there's one other spur I wanna go down and show you guys. So let's keep exploring. made it to the end of I think it's 3N06. Um, as you can see you know you reach the end once you uh, get to that gate right there. Um, there's not much further up that way. I don't believe there's any yellow posts up there. We passed a road back there. I shot some footage so I could show you guys exactly which one I was talking about. There's more yellow posts up that way. It's a little tucked away, so a lot of people don't know that there's any back there, and it's a little more difficult wheeling. So this is the first time we've actually come up here and that gate's been open. Um, we'll pull it close behind us, but we took Dolly up there for a little walk and uh, she loves the snow, so. As we approach the turn for catching up to trailhead 3N06B, anticipation filled the air. Crossing the wash to reach the trailhead, we treaded lightly and very carefully mindful of the potential hazards in this flood prone area. Proceeding with caution is key to navigating this tricky terrain. Passing by yellow post number 10, we caught a glimpse of fellow adventurers already immersed in the wilderness. Hey there, quick commercial break brought to you by 395 Jerky, the sponsor of this video. 395 Jerky is a craft beef jerky company that we started over three years ago, which was inspired by adventure. If you're unfamiliar with our jerky, you can get more information about the six flavors that we offer at 395junkie.com, as well as see the positive reviews that we've received. As well as something we're gonna talk about right now for the first time are three different bundles that are also now available online that you can check out. The first bundle is called the Adventure Starter Pack. That includes all six flavors in three ounce size bags, plus a 395 Junkie patch and sticker with free shipping, for $50. Or you can go with the Custom Explorer Pack, which is four of the five ounce bags, and you can choose which four flavors you would like, 
Also, you get the free sticker, the free patch, the free shipping for $50 as well. The last bundle for our ultimate enthusiast is the Big Adventure Pack. That includes four 10 ounce size bags, a patch of sticker, free shipping, for just $90. But guys, you have to use the coupon code ADVENTURE at checkout in order to get this deal as well as the free stickers and patches. And there's only limited supplies available. So get on the website right now and go check it out. Yes, hurry, don't wait. Now let's hit the trail. Let's go. As we journeyed along the trail, the landscape transformed around us, greeted by the onset of gently falling snow. Approaching the creek crossing on 3N06B, we were met with a peaceful flow of water, a reminder of the natural elements that shape our path. All right, guys, so we made it to the very last yellow post, I believe, off of that B route, that alternate B. I think it's 3N06B or something like that. Um, but there was like four or five of them off this trail. We're at, I believe, almost the very end. And as you can see, it is snowing right now, which uh, there's a winter weather advisory right now for this area, but it's not sticking. I'm not really concerned about it. We're gonna lay out all the gear and we're gonna let everybody pick what gear they want because not all of it's the same. So that'll be interesting. I wanted to make a point in this video to show you guys a bunch of different gear that you know isn't gonna break the bank. And I wanted to take you guys to a place that you could afford to go as far as gas wise and not spend a ton. <laughs> all right guys, so this is gonna be fun. As you see behind us, we have a bunch of different gear that I wanna go over with you guys to show you there's options. There's the expensive option and there's a not so expensive option and both of them work just fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a little game of pick your poison <laughs> or pick your adventure, whatever you wanna call it. We have two tents that we're gonna choose from. One is the uh, Gazelle T3, which is the bigger of the tents. Um, and then we also have a small, what's called a Moon Lens one. It's a four person tent, which is, if you guys know tents, that's more like a two person tent. But the caveat to this is, if you choose the Gazelle, you automatically get the, dolly. You, you automatically get Dolly. <laughs> and you also automatically get the big buddy, Mr. Heater here, because there's enough room in there to be safe. So, um, and then of course we have the smaller uh, uh, buddy heater that will go in the smaller tent. So we'll go over items one by one, but let the selections begin. And I will turn it over to my daughter to make the first decision. Wait a minute, why should she go first? Shouldn't we rock, paper, scissors? Yeah, that's a great idea. Who goes first? Ladies. Ladies first. Ladies. Boom, right, so boom, boom. Show one, your hand. One, two, three, and then show. I shoot, I shoot. Show. One, two, show, three, shoot. shoot. Ready? <laughs> yep, just like... Ah, all right, dear. I win. Pick our poison. <laughs> can we can we talk about it? Yeah. Obviously, they're not going to want Dolly. So I don't think we need to rush to the tent right now. Well, why don't we just get that out of the way? All right, deal. This is our tent that we're going to be sleeping with. This is a Gazelle T3. You can see it's probably about... I'm 6'4", so it's probably about 5'8". <laughs> you are so, not 6'4". The camera makes me look shorter, but as you I'm can see, five, three. this fits long ways in Mama Goose's Jeep to give you an idea of the size of it. So, dear, go ahead and put this over by our camp. And All I want right. to show you guys the other tent here. The gazelle is ours. This is very small. It packs up real small, but this will fit is slightly smaller than the T3. And this I got off of Amazon. It's called a moon lens. So there you go, champ. That's all yours. All right, so because we've already decided on who gets what tent, I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, the buddy heaters and I'll give the, this is the medium sized Mr. Heater. This is for you guys. And we're gonna get the bigger one here. This is the biggest buddy heater that they make. And I brought plenty of propane so we can stay warm tonight. Normally I don't bring this much crap, so, but, this is close to home and I wanted to show you guys what your options are. So they'll use the small green propane tanks. We'll let this baby run all night and be nice and toasty. Really next option is gonna be chairs and neither one of these you're, you're really gonna lose, but I'll go over them with you and give you an idea of what the cost is and comfort and things like that. So we've got the front runner chairs here and there's two of them packed in this, which is real small. And then these here, if you guys have seen my channel, these are my favorite, the Kermit chairs. 
These are really good looking, but they're, they take a little longer to put together. So which ones do you guys want? So given the fact that those are Dan's favorite chairs, I'm going to snag them. <laughs> As I suspected he would. <laughs> good job. Good so job. move into the last item that we can select and choose wisely, sir. We have sleeping bags and we have X pads, which are air mattresses. So what we have here is our first item, which are, I believe they're 20 degree sleeping bags, the, the cocoon size. Um, Mama Goose and I bought these 10 years ago, eight years ago, when we were going to Idaho to do a, a trip out there in the back country. And these stay very, very warm. So you'll be, you'll be fine. The downside with these uh, sleeping bags is they're that real fine material and it uh, they're the cocoon shapes towards the bottom. So you don't really have a whole lot of room to move around, but they pack away really small. And then of course we just have regular sleeping bags. We've had these for like 20 years. We bought them for Bass Pro originally. And these are the sleeping bags that the girls always borrow because they're so nice and warm inside. They're all plaid, but they do take up a lot of room. So pick your poison, sir. You want to go with the safe bet, which you're familiar with, or do you want to try something that's going to really keep you guys warm? I want to sleep in one of these. All right, well then let's, let's just throw this closer to your camp, shall we? All right. <laughs> so for our final selection here, we have two air mattresses. Again, both of these are safe options, and I, I'm careful to suggest that all of this stuff is affordable because we have some air mattresses that are on the, the cheaper side of things, you know, 50 bucks, 40 bucks from Amazon. Um, these aren't that. If you're looking for a quality air mattress, I would highly encourage you to check out the x -Peds. Both of these are double sizes. The purple one here is, I think, about uh, six inches tall, whereas this one is three or four inches. So, but they're both the exact same footprint. They're both very comfortable. So I'm gonna obviously pick the six inch one just because it's a lot more comfy. We're gonna get these moved over to our sites. And actually, let's just go ahead and throw this. Why don't we throw it closer to the sites? Yeah, I think so. All Why right. No. <laughs> the cat. What I have here that I wanna go over with you guys are other options for your overlanding experience that you can use that are on the cheaper side and the more expensive side. We have two tables here. This is a Kelty table. This is real small. This is probably like maybe 24 by 24 and it sits about two, two feet off the ground. This is good if it's just for two people and you're not trying to prepare food over it. Um, so we'll get this set up. And then this one, I get a lot of comments on this folks. This is the Mountain Summit gear, heavy duty roll top table. And it's 47 inches by 28 by 28. And this thing is fantastic. We've had it for years. Look at how small it packs away. So we're gonna move on to the next item here. All right, so the next item that's important to talk about is one of my favorite things to do is cooking at camp. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know what this is. This is the Tembo Tusk Scottle that we use for cooking breakfast, lunch, dinner. We've done popcorn muffins, and it's a really, really unique device that you don't really see uh, other than in the camping and overlanding world, although it should be. So that's the first item, but we're not cooking with this today. Sorry, Jer. What we're gonna be cooking with is something a lot more basic that um, if you don't have a whole lot of extra money to go out shopping and, and, and buy a Scottle or one of the real expensive stoves, not that they're not worth it, but you most likely already have one of these at, your, at the house, or you can pick it up at Bass Pro Shops. It's nothing more than a Dutch oven. And since we're gonna have a campfire, we're gonna be cooking this over the campfire, the hot coals. So it doesn't get any easier than that. Next option, if you've been a fan of the channel for many, many, many years, you'll know that we started with these Nemo uh, uh, blow up kind of water carriers. You put the water in it and then you pump it up with this and then it's got a sprayer that you can wash your face, you can do everything that basically this can, except this is a whole lot more reasonable when it comes to price. And for those of you that are ready to move up and wanna get something that will also filter water, take a look at the Lifesaver. This is about five and a half gallons, I believe. And um, it pumps up here. And then you can also have like the uh, sprayer that goes here. And it does the same thing, but it also will filter water up to like 99.999% of whatever the germs are. So this will come in handy if you're at a place for a long time and you want to be able to 
be next to a stream, which we are, filter the water and be able to consume it. This is kind of an optional item. These are two different jackeries. These are a power station. And what we use these for at camp is charging camera gear, electric blankets, um, the Starlink, if I have any work to do or if we want to get some internet connection to check in on the girls, um, we'll use either one of these. We started with this and we only use this for about a year, year and a half. So if you don't have nothing at all, you can start with this. Kind of where we started and where we ended up with, both of them are great options. Both of them work really well and stack well inside of the Jeep. These are just rigid toolboxes that I bought from Home Depot. They're stackable, but uh, we used these for a couple years and they worked just fine. They got uh, latches that seal, keeps the water and dust out. And then after about two or three years, I upped my game and I got these Zargus cases, which are fantastic. They stack really well inside the Jeep as well. They're all watertight. They got these really good latches and these are the Zargus K470 boxes. They have a bunch online, but these are the K470s if you guys are looking for something for uh, hauling your gear around. Whenever we're with the ladies, I like to give them a little bit of privacy, especially in weather like this. This is a, uh, a privacy shelter that we just bought on Amazon. It pops up really quick, but make sure you have signal and you're familiar with how to fold it away because it's kind of a trick. And then this is the clean waste toilet. This opens up so it's a seat and then it has legs here that fold out so they can sit down, take care of their business and have all the luxuries of home. Just, it's a whole lot folder. All right, so last option and probably one of the most important choices that you can make is how you're gonna keep your food cold. And for years, we did nothing more than use an ice chest with ice and on really quick overnight trips like this, it's perfect, there's no need to worry about it. Alternatively, whenever you're on longer trips, three, four days, and you don't have access to ice and you don't want your all your stuff to get soggy, this is an investment that I would encourage you guys to make because there are options out there for three or $400, and that is the 12 volt refrigerator. This is on a slide, which makes it easy to get in and out of, but basically it runs off of your car battery or the Jackery. Again, if you got a few extra bucks, one of the first things I would get if you're planning on doing some overlanding and camping trips would be a refrigerator, just because it does make your life so much easier and keeps the food cold. All right, so first up is this uh, Moon Lens uh, tent that the kids are gonna sleep in, and we'll show you how easy it gets put together. First things first, we need to get these uh, poles put together, and there should be three of them. All right, so now that we have these poles up, all you have to do is tie it here in the middle. Mama Goose knows what to do. We need to get this rain fly on ASAP. No Rocky. This is amazing. There we go. Perfect. All right. And then you're going to want to anchor it down with the, the other hooks inside the bag. So their tent's all set up. We just have to stake the corners down. It's really coming down. I don't know if you guys could tell from the video, but this is really, really cool. Um, but we're going to uh, get theirs finished up and then we'll meet you over by our rig and we're going to put together the gazelle. So now that the kids' tent set up, we're going to put together the gazelle and it should be a little easier and looks like it's, uh, the snow lightened up just a bit. So now that this is set up, here's a tip. Put the rain fly on first. It's a lot easier. And then we'll have Mama Goose go in the middle and pop up the top. All right, pop the top, dear. And just like that, guys, you can see the value in this Gazelle T3. It went up in a fraction of the time that that smaller one did. The small one didn't take that long to do, but this Gazelle T3 in an instant. So, all right, guys, so these are the Kermit chairs, which I love. It doesn't take that long to put together. Hey, man. I'll do one. Renee can see how the other one's done. And we will uh, show you guys how to get put together. Thank but you. essentially, you've got one, two, three, four pieces. That's the first problem. This is the cup holder. <laughs> what you got to do is you got to unroll it like this. This piece here on the side here, Renee. 
They go in the holes. These get moved over and clipped in there. And some of you are watching it right now. They're like, no, nah, that's too much work. Yes, it, it is. is, but it's really, really nice. I promise you. And then these get put into here. <laughs> snapped in there, snapped in there. You've got this piece here. Gives you some uh, more support. Get off, Sit, lift it. This. Uh huh. All Slip right. It around. And we're just about done. Oh, the thing in your hand. Oh. Okay. Done. And there's your Kermit chair. One chair is complete. And we do have leg extenders for them too. I don't know if we're going to use them because no, I'm not. not sitting in it, so I don't really care. But here you go, doll. Have a seat. And then flip the whole chair. So I'm on dinner duty in this lovely weather. My favorite weather of all with frozen fingers, chop an onion. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for our chicken Mexican chicken tortilla soup that we are going to be cooking on the fire in our Dutch oven so I'm just chopping onion that I'm going to saute before adding the chicken and then all the yummy ingredients I don't know what more you want me to say. <laughs> so we've got the uh, Dutch oven on the fire. We got the onions on, in there right now. We're just letting it saute for a little bit and then we're gonna add the chicken breast after these are nice golden brown. All the veggies are prepped, chicken's in here cooking. What Tish is gonna add now is just some uh, taco seasoning and we're gonna let it cook with the chicken and get real in there. <laughs> So <laughs> marinated, marinated, do it to it, dear. And maybe taking some like, oh, look at that. It's going to be cold. Some salad. Mm -hmm. All right. So now that the chicken is done cooking, we're going to add chicken broth. Is that boiling or like tripping? All right, so now I'm adding um, Mexican recipe stewed tomatoes. So these are the ones that say Mexican recipe on them because it already has all those spices in it. Two cans. And finally, cilantro and the rest of the chicken taco seasoning. Since the carrots take a really long time to soften, we're gonna go ahead and add those in now. I just buy them already peeled and cut. Stir it up. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Basic dinner. This is kind of the point of this video is to show you that it doesn't need to be really complicated. We chopped up the chicken, we chopped up the veggies, and we threw it in the Dutch oven on the fire, which you're gonna have either way. But um, we'll be eating in no time. We got everything pretty much cooked. We've gotta add the, the squash and the celery. All right, so now that the soup is almost done, we're gonna add in the vegetables that don't take a long time to cook. That's a perfect amount right there. And it smells so good. It's not that cold. It just looks a lot colder than it is, but it's going to be a good meal for tonight. So it's freezy. <laughs> All we got to do is just uh, take the soup off of the fire, cut up the avocado, add some tortilla strips to it, and we're going to be eating in no time. So I'm going to pull this off. Mama Goose is going to slice up the avocado and serve us. Oh. That looks magnificent. So guys, chicken tortilla soup, you guys saw it, wasn't that difficult to make. Um, sure, it was a little bit of work to cut up the veggies and the chicken, but ever, after that, you just throw it on the fire and let it do its thing. And really, the um, prep can be done at home as well. Yeah, that's true. This whole video was about um, inspiring you guys to get out there, giving you some options of places to go in Southern California. 
what kind of gear you might need. And I would encourage you guys to please leave some comments, uh, ask questions. If you guys need anything, we've been through the ringer. We've been doing this for so long that um, I would hate to see people have to go through the learning curve that we did where you spend a bunch of money on stuff that you end up replacing afterwards. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Happy trails.